Hi, my name is Dr. Ferdinand Mweke, and this is Truth in Brief. Uh, in this edition of Truth in Brief, I'd like to share with you from Hebrews chapter 12 and verses 28 and 29. Hebrews chapter 12, 28 and 29. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. Our God is a consuming fire. You see, it's important in our worship of God that we have a proper and balanced understanding of who God is. This is so foundational in acceptable worship. You see, it's not all the worship that is brought before the Lord that God accepts. Cain, for instance, brought offerings to the Lord, but the Lord did not accept Cain's offering, but he accepted Abel's offering. We want our service, we want our worship to be acceptable to the Lord. When we lift up our hands in praise, when we bring our offerings, when we pray our prayers, we would like the Lord to accept our persons, to accept what we offer. Even when we preach for the Lord, when we serve Him in ministry, or when we give for the service of Almighty God, we would like God to accept us and to accept our offering. That's why the scripture we just read spoke about serving God acceptably. A lot of people are going to serve God, but they will not serve Him acceptably. Now, for us to serve God acceptably, we cannot be like the Samaritan woman to whom the Lord Jesus told. If you recall the story of Jesus and the Samaritan woman at the well, Jesus said to her, you worship something you don't know, but we worship the one that we know because salvation is of the Jews. It's possible to worship someone we don't know. And once we do that, our worship of him cannot be correct. It cannot be accurate. We can't worship him as we ought because we don't know him as he is. You recall that Brother Paul saw this altar that was in, in Athens, and on the altar was written, to the unknown God, or as one version puts it, the message version, it says, to the God that nobody knows. Now, if you don't know what he is like, you cannot worship him accurately. Now, in this scripture that we have just read, we see a revelation of God that all of us that want to worship the Lord must keep in mind perpetually. And that scripture says, our God is a consuming fire. Our God is a consuming fire. Does it mean that God is going to consume you? No, 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 no. That's not what the scripture is talking about. But he's saying that as you approach God, as you relate with him, as you serve him, as you worship him as father, as you celebrate him in praise and worship, and as you preach for him and as you serve him from the pulpit, remember that the person you are worshiping is a consuming fire. Never forget that. And the consequence of that revelation is found in verse 28. He said, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. A constant revelation of the fact that our God is a consuming fire, we produce the fear of God inside our hearts. And when the Bible says that God is a consuming fire, that is not a joke. God is a consuming fire. When he came down on Mount Sinai, the entire mountain was on fire. And it, there was smoke, there was... In fact, the Bible says Moses was so terrified that he said, I am quaking with fear. The fear of God has become very scarce in the church. That's why people can do whatever they like and sing in the choir. That's why preachers can preach powerful sermons, but they are living in secret sin, in adultery. They are telling lies on the pulpit. They are manufacturing testimonies. They are deceiving people. They are getting money by all kinds of crooked means because there is no fear of God in the hearts of the people. If we are going to serve God acceptably, it must be with godly fear. It must be a service that constantly recognizes his personality. A service that constantly remembers that our God is a consuming fire. We cannot afford to forget that. Once we forget that, we start getting careless around God. We start taking God for granted. We believe that, okay, now we can sin. And you know, because God is merciful and God is love, then it's not a problem. No. In fact, God forgives our sins so that we can fear him. God does not forgive us for us to take him for granted. I know that what I'm saying is not very popular in the church today, but if we are going to worship God acceptably, if we will not be disappointed in eternity, 
we must make sure that we worship him with reverence, deep reverence, and with godly fear. He's not our classmate, and we must remember that constantly. My prayer for you is that in every area of your life, you will respect the Lord. You will live in awe of him, and I guarantee you, that fear of God is going to attract his presence. It's going to attract his blessing, and it's going to attract supernatural enlightenment in your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray your blessing on my, on my friend watching Truth in Brief. And I ask that your reverence and your fear will abide in our hearts in a generation that is living in a way that does not please you. That our lives may bring you pleasure. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.